Hello, and welcome to Let's Talk About That, a show where we discuss many of life's interesting and unique topics in the hopes to answer some of your most burning knowledge questions. Now, let's say you're on a crowded street in the middle of the afternoon. You spot someone laying on the ground and they appear to be unconscious. Would you help? I bet your answer to this question was, yeah, of course I would help. And that is the answer I'm sure most people would say if they saw someone in need. However, research in social psychology suggests a different story. Funny enough, research seems to show that when you're in a group, you are less likely to help. And the more people you add to that group, individuals feel less inclined to take action. This is known as the bystander effect. And that basically states that an individual feels less inclined to take action because of the presence of others in the group. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, why does this happen? Well, there could be many reasons. How an individual interprets the situation, maybe they're in a hurry, they're not necessarily going to stop. How someone understands their environment or how their environment is to them. Maybe someone who has a medical background may be more inclined to stop whether there are people around or not. How, the res how they respond to the group, meaning the crowd of people around them. People who do not see others react may deem the situation non-serious and continue on. There could be cultural differences. Not every city, culture, country responds to emergencies, people on the street the same way. And it could also be something that is called the result of diffusion of responsibility. Now, I think the, this last factor plays quite a large role in understanding the bystander effect and why it occurs. Diffusion of responsibility basically means that an individual is less likely to help in a situation because they may assume others are already taking responsibility to take action. They could also possibly assume someone else has much more knowledge and capability to assist in an emergency and therefore stand down. So how did the bystander effect come into, per come into place in the first place? Well, that takes us back to 1964 to the murder of Kitty Genovese. Kitty was a 28-year-old woman who was raped and stabbed outside her apartment building in New York. Two weeks after the incident, the New York Times wrote an article that claimed 38 witnesses either saw or heard the attack and no one called the police or came to her aid. It has since been corrected that not all of those facts are true and some people did in fact call the police and come to her side. But that's not the point. The main point is that it got social psychologists questioning, how did an incident like this come to be? The bystander effect was first introduced by social psychologists Don, John Darley and Bib Latine in 1968, after they became intrigued with the murder and surrounding aftermath of Kitty Genovese. The researchers began a series of experiments to test the bystander effect. In a typical experiment, the participant is either participant is either alone with a partner or small group. An emergency situation is then staged and it is then measured how long it would take the participant to take action. Interestingly enough, they found as the number of people in the group increased, the likelihood of the participant to react to the emergency decreased. In some specific experiments where participants were responding to a woman in distress, 70% responded when they were the only witness in the room However, only 40% responded when there were other participants involved, either knowing of the experiment or they were planted. So we, that is a brief introduction to the bystander effect and social and its and social psychology. Thank you for tuning into Let's Talk About That, and we will see you next time.